In this video, I've headed over to Great Mercury Island, where I've volunteered to be part of the Argentine Ant Eradication Program. We're over here for a week, and in my spare time, I'm going to do as much spearfishing as I can to try and get a good feed for the crew. Well, g'day everyone. Welcome back to another video. This one is pretty special. So it's been a massively long day for me. I got up at 4 a.m., drove through Auckland, came down to Fidianga, we got on a boat and we've made it over to Great Mercury Island. And we are here as a bunch of volunteers to help them eradicate the Argentine ant from the island. And uh, as a bonus, we have a bit of spare time to go spear fishing. So we've got this beautiful, beautiful bay down here. We've got Drew and Victor. And we're gonna get into it. So we'd made it over to the island and we've got ourselves situated, we've got all our stuff in the Shearer's quarters where we're staying sorted out. We decided we'd have a little afternoon dive before the sun went down. Alright, let's do this! So I didn't capture the shot on this Trevally on film because this was actually pretty much the first ledge I went over. Really wasn't expecting it, but came over, saw a nice snapper just leaving and then this Trevally came in. So 100% took the opportunity and plugged it with a pretty nice shot. And uh, yeah, grabbed it, grabbed it in the gills, gave it their key, and uh, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah, I dropped over this ledge here. There was a big snapper, but I, um, he saw me before I saw him, and I just saw the end of him buggering off, and then a school of trevs like this came in. And I'm not going to say no to a bit of bloody Trevally sashimi. Perfect. So we carried on diving on our way out, didn't really bump into any more fish, but uh, came to this spot here and there was a bunch of cracks in the rock, so had a look around and sure enough, wasn't long before I found some crayfish. So I wasn't really sure whether these ones were going to be legal here, but I just thought I'd have a go at the biggest one. And yeah, a bit of a bit of a struggle, but managed to get it out. And then I kind of looked at it and just I decided it was too small. I was pretty sure it wasn't going to be legal, so just let it go before I went back to the surface. And uh, yeah, grabbed a couple of kinna and then looked up, and I see Drew heading to the surface here. But there is a nice snapper just chilling out right in front of him. Do you see that snapper? Do you see that snapper? It was right in front of you. I just got, I just pulled a cray out here, but it was too small. But there was a snapper like right in front of you, probably about, I don't know, that big. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few piggies. I just thought maybe I'd chuck this kinner right here because since that snapper was kicking around, so. So yeah, I grabbed a couple of kinna, just broke them up and dropped them sort of over, like, there was a, kind of a sandy gutter down on the bottom there, so sort of dropped them. I could see uh, the snapper that I'd seen before just cruising around. So I kind of dropped down and smashed a few kinna on the bottom as well, just to sort of bring it, bring the snapper into one one spot.
I'd been away, had a bit of a look for some more crayfish and hadn't really found any, um, despite the ground looking really, really good for them. So anyway, I came back, dived down quite a way away from the burley and just slowly, slowly made my way over to it. There'd been quite a few snapper swimming around mid-water and I didn't want them to spook from me diving down too close to the burley. But uh, but yeah, I'm slowly coming up to the burley here and I hear Drew's gun go off. And unbeknownst to me, he's actually set a burley just a little way from me and that gun going off was him shooting a snapper. But obviously his burley has been somewhat more delicious than mine, I think because when I look at the burley here, there is nothing on it. So yeah, kind of have to give up on that one and head back to the surface and rethink things. So yeah, carry on. I'm kind of uh, snooping along the coast looking for snapper parked up in, in gutters and things. And I come over this ledge here and pretty much straight away bump into a little snapper. And it's kind of probably a little bit too small to shoot really. Probably illegal fish but only just. I don't really want to take the chance. So it kind of moves off and I just slowly carry on making my way up to the edge here and once I get to the ledge I peer over and I can't see anything so I decide I'm going to grab a couple of kina to break up and put over the ledge and see what comes in and I grab them and then I look down here and see a crayfish So yeah, I break up the two kinner I've got just over the ledge and then get ready, drop back down and I want to have a go at this crayfish, looks like a reasonable size fish so. So yeah, I just drop back down into the crack, work out where it is, work my way in and have a go at it. And it's pretty dark in there, so this footage is uh, not very clear. But get a hand to it, have a bit of a wrestle, and manage to get it. So I kind of left Drew behind a little bit at this point and he wasn't anywhere near me with the float boat so I just tied it up in my float line. And then I came back to the ledge and dived back down. I wanted to see if the kinner that I chucked over here had brought in any larger snapper. I come up to the ledge and I see a snapper just moving away. So pretty good sign. So just slowly make my way down a little bit further and uh, have this snapper kind of just pop up out of the weeds. Uh, and it's too small but then just over the ledge I see another snapper and I kind of figure it might be a reasonable size so kind of reach out, take a hurried shot and totally miss. Probably not really a surprise there, I was a little bit too rushed. Mm -hmm. 
So I'd managed to stuff the snapper up, but I kind of figured there might be more crayfish down this ledge. There was quite a few good cracks running down it, so dive back down and start looking in the cracks. And find one parked up in this hole here. So work my way in and have a crack at it. I get my hand to it but uh, it wedges itself in there really really tight so I have a bit of a battle with it to be honest it's a bit of a push pull and I'm pushing it back and pulling it forward and really wriggling it but finally managed to get it out and head to the surface It's a nice one too. Drew had obviously caught up to me so I was able to chuck this one in the chill pod. And uh, yeah we dived around a bit longer, didn't really see anything so made our way back in. Alright, we're back, we made it back just before dark and uh, it was actually a pretty pretty decent little spear. We have a couple of crays, you would have seen me grab them. We've got the trevally that I shot that I didn't get on film and uh, there's also, courtesy of Drew, a couple of snapper, a couple of little snapper and a pigfish here. Oh, or a hogfish as they'd say in America. And uh, yeah, a couple of snapper. So uh, that's a pretty decent first little outing for just a couple of hours off the shore. So we're pretty happy. We're going to get out of these stinking suits, have a bit of a shower, there's a feed on, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll decide what we're going to do with this fish after, but uh, we'll keep you posted. So the next day dawned a beautiful day beautiful sunrise and we jumped in the trucks and we set out and started to do some ant baiting so this was our main method of for controlling the ants and we basically lined up in rows about three meters apart from each other and we'd take a couple of steps basically trying to put an ant bait every couple of meters so yeah all joined up in a line and just worked our way across the fields once we done one area we moved along and uh, baited along to the next area and uh, yeah that was to be pretty much the main method for control and we we're working I want to say three hours in the morning a couple of hours at night stopping in the middle of the day when it was just far too hot to work what are we up to here, Victor? <laughs> Fat feed. No, no, no. So we've got fillets of fish, we've got a crayfish, we've got an awesome coleslaw and some rissoles for the people that don't eat fish. And uh, we've also got chips. Yeah, feeds on. Second full day on the island. We've woken to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunrise. And uh, yeah, we are off to do some more ant baiting this morning and uh, hopefully a break during the day we're going to get out for a bit of an epic dive alrighty look at this beautiful beautiful bay here oh. we've done our work for the morning we've got a couple of kayaks loaded on the truck here and uh, 
Myself and Drew are heading out and we're gonna try and try and smack a kingy over. Alright, spot number one. What are we looking for? Kingy tire. I hope so. We got people to feed, so a kingy would be most welcome. So I made a bit of a stuff up here and I chucked my gun over the side of the kayak but it wasn't tied onto my float line so I had to have quite a few dives before I found it. Luckily I did find it here but uh, yeah while I was looking for it I managed to see a couple of pretty nice kings and they came in, got all friendly, got close but uh, of course I didn't have my gun on me. It's kind of always the way. But yeah, it was pretty deep where we'd anchored the kayak, so I was pretty happy to find it without having to spend too long diving for it. Yes, got it. Whew. And uh, got back to the surface and made sure that I clipped it on this time. Finally, with my gun in my hand, I was able to do some diving and try and find those kingfish again. So I dropped down in front of a rock here, and obviously you can see there's plenty of bait fish around. We've got two spot demoiselles and sweep, and the old blue mau mau floating around. There were coeys there and everything. But what surprised me here was this massive, massive school of silver drummer. I don't think I've ever seen a school with so many silver drummer in it. There must have been hundreds in this school, all big silver drummer. If you'd wanted to set a snapper burly, they would have been ideal. But uh, I was kind of hoping for kingfish here, so left them alone and headed back to the surface. Drummer down there. I kind of figured out how the current was working at this stage, so I was kind of thought I was pretty much on the pressure point here. So I drop back down and I start grunting. I'm hoping that by grunting like this I'm gonna make kingfish in the area curious and they'll come in and check out what's what's making all this commotion so I grunt a bit and sure enough here it is it works kingfish comes in but it, it's just way too small just a little rat this guy so yeah <laughs> No larger friends with it, so we head back to the surface. I decide I'm going to look in a little bit shallower and find this pretty, pretty bouldery area. Was, there was actually a ledge just off to the side of it and I'd, previously I'd dropped down to go and snoop over the ledge and I'd noticed some feelers under a rock. So yeah, dropped down again and there it is, Mr. Crayfish. So yeah, get my hand to it and uh, it backs up, don't get a very good grab on it, but it backs up and I'm able to get it in the back of the hole, pull it out, have a look at it. Uh, kind of decide I'll just have a look see if there's any mates kicking around with it but uh, don't see anything so back to the top we go probably too small but I'll give them a measure anyway
and yeah as I suspected it's just a bit too small so just let it go and as things are pretty quiet there we decide we'll move so go back to the kayak and uh, jump back on a bit of a stuff up really. I um, took my gun overboard and it wasn't tied onto my float line so I dropped the gun, I had to find the gun, saw a couple of kingies before I'd found the gun but then we didn't see anything else, um, just a couple of rats and a bunch of other fish so we come out to this rock in the middle of nowhere and uh, we're going to try again. So we hadn't been in the water long and I hear Drew yelling to me, second shot, second shot. So I race over there and he'd shot a king but the spear hadn't gone all the way through. He'd got muzzle wrapped. So I dive down in on it and I'm trying to line up a shot here but just before I get there the fish rips off the spear and takes off. And I probably maybe could have got a shot in there but just wasn't sure of it and... Uh, didn't want to miss so yeah it's, it's a bit of a tricky one that one but uh, that's how it goes I guess I was nearly there I could just see the flopper hanging out I didn't want to take a long shot at it it was a nice fish too damn Damn! Oh well, at least we know they're here. Did it come on on its own or? Yeah, by itself. Oh, okay. Damn! So we kind of got to the pressure point of the rock and there was just bait schools everywhere. We got sweep, we got mau mau, we got demizels, we got kahuru, we got kawai. And I was sure there'd be some kingfish around, but uh, wasn't really seeing them, so took a shot at this trevally, and uh, it was my turn to get a muzzle wrap. You can see the string all wrapped around my rubber there, and it kind of limited the spear, and uh, didn't hit the trevally. God damn it. I muzzle wrapped as well. But anyway, quick reload and I dive back down. I'm really, really hoping that a king's going to come in, to be honest. And So I just dropped down through all this fish life. It's just absolutely incredible how much fish life there was on this rock. Got these uh, koi's here, or koheru. Big, nice school of koheru. And I could have shot one, but I was kind of hoping that it get a kingfish would come in behind them. But I don't know what the kingfish were doing. They are definitely playing hard to get on this day. So yeah, I just dropped down and look at all this amazing, amazing fish life. It's pretty incredible. And... Uh, I'm heading back to the surface and I spy a nice trevally through this little sweep so line it up and uh, get a shot away and everything works as it should this time and I've shot myself a nice trevally and uh, I pull it in nice and slowly and you can see it's surrounded by fish and I'm really hoping that it's going to bring a kingfish in so yeah pull it in really nice and slowly get my hand to it Drew comes over and dives down while I'm dealing with it and uh, he's just hoping that all that commotion from that fish struggling on the line will have brought a kingfish in so I pull my spear out of it give it the icky and I'm just watching Drew as well but uh, yeah, like I said before, the Kings were definitely playing hard to get on this day. And uh, we had to give up. Alright, well, we're back 
back out of the water. Man, a bit, bit uh, unlucky on the kings. Drew saw all the kings and yeah, um, he shot that one and I got down to give it a second shot and uh, it got off just before I was close enough. But uh, we've managed a couple of traps, a couple of nice traps here and a couple of coeys. And uh, we're just about to leave and we saw this boat pull up and I was like, I know who that is. So uh, yeah, we've got Ollie here. Yeah, he's, he's got a nice fat kawaii there. Beauty. And uh, he's obviously on one of his missions. So yeah, we've just had a bit of a chat. Trying to trying to plan a little collab in the near future. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, he's trying to find a king as well and we've got to get back to do some ants. So we're gonna, we're gonna put off, go and do our thing, let him do his and uh, yeah. All right, back on the beach and uh, Alan's just got back as well. So, uh, you want to show us your fish? Yeah, I just got a snapper. Oh, look at that. Beauty. Yes, well done. All right, we've got kai. We've got some awesome kai moana, so we're going to pack up and have a little swim, wash the stink out of the wetsuit, and uh, get out of here. The next day, I got up nice and early and flew the drone. I wanted to get some of those sunrise shots uh, on film. And I have to say, it was pretty epic. Got some pretty mean photos from this little flight. Alrighty, work is done for the morning. And uh, we've got a few hours before the uh, afternoon shift kicks in so I'm actually gonna go for a bit of a mush I'm headed out to that island out over there we'll see what we can find still really would like to get that kingy but uh, I'll probably settle for a couple of snapper if I can get them Alright, this is our beautiful, beautiful bay where we're going to enter the water. We're going to jump in the water, we're going to head out to this little island here. See what we can see. So I hopped in the water and I was just going past the first point actually. When I saw a few snapper milling around, so I chucked some kinner over this ledge here. Not really hoping for much. Went away, looked for a few crays, didn't see any. Came back and... Yeah, I've got a couple of little snapper on the thing here. And yeah, I kind of watched them for a bit and kind of might have been worth shooting, but I decided I'll hold off. I reckon I'm going to find something better, but further on. So I made my way further out and came across this beautiful area and so I was just snapper snooping around when this butterfish poked its head out and one of our volunteers Val had said to me please if you see a butterfish would you shoot it for me because she absolutely loves them so yep that one was for you Val and uh, scored it with a nice shot yes I'd found quite a nice little gutter that I thought would be the ideal spot for a burley so smashed up a whole lot of kinna down there, went away, looked around for some crayfish and didn't really find any crayfish but came back, I don't know, I'd given this maybe, maybe 15 or 20 minutes I suppose and came back to peer down into the gutter and you can see here I've got a great cover of kelp so I'm kind of peering through the kelp here And I see a nice snapper down there on it. In fact, there's a couple of reasonable snapper there. But there's one that I really want to take. So 
I wait till it turns around and then push off and I'm heading down there but then the smaller snapper spokes and it takes off Undeterred, I come back probably another 15 minutes later and managed to get my shaft into the snapper and unfortunately I'd forgotten to turn my camera on before I came over the ledge so didn't get the shot on film but the result is this nice snapper and uh, yeah I'm reasonably happy with it it's a very nice eating fish quick icky finishes the job and after a quick look at it it joins the butterfish on my float line yes a bit later on i have a lone kingfish come in for a look so i drop to the ground and reach out take a long shot and you wouldn't believe it i've got that muzzle wrap again I've got plenty of shooting line, I would have easily hit that fish at that distance without the muzzle wrap, but yeah, the shooting line gets wrapped around that Ford rubber. Bloody muzzle wrap. So I've set another Kinnaburley here, and I've got a few reasonable snapper on it. There's one pretty good one actually, so I reach out, take a shot, hit the fish, but it rips straight off. And you can see here that my shot is just, just a little bit too high. And uh, yeah, I hate doing that. And yeah, only a couple of minutes after that snap ripping off, a shark turns up. So I head back to my fish to guard my fish that are already on my float line. I haven't taken the float boat and didn't want to carry it over the paddocks. So um, yeah, I've just got them on the stringer. So I head back to guard my fish and I decide it's time to go in. All right, back on dry land and uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool little mission. A little bit... Uh, a little bit disappointed not to get that king. Blimmin' muzzle wrap, man. I, I, I think I know why it's muzzle wrapping, and I think I need to make some changes on my gun. It's kind of a pain, but uh, anyway. We uh, then managed to shoot this nice snapper. Not bad. Probably seven pound, maybe. And uh, a nice butterfish. There is someone on the island that loves butterfish, and I was told if I see a butterfish, take it so that thing popped out in front of me i took the opportunity and took it so anyway we're going to make our way back hopefully i'm in time for the afternoon work and uh yeah see how we go so our work for the afternoon was monitoring and in the morning we'd actually put out these pottles and they've got a little bit of cotton wool that's soaked with sugar syrup in them so we'd put them out in the morning we'd left them to have a bit of time for the ants to come and find them and then in the afternoon we were picking them up and checking them and yeah we were looking for uh, the Argentine ant but there was a bunch of other species as well so if we found them we would call Drew or Alan over and they would tell us what species they were and uh, mainly we were finding big headed and southern ants but yeah, the monitoring is done so that they know where to put the ant bait. The bait is really, really expensive actually, so they really want to target the areas that have the ants in them. So the monitoring gives them that information. All right, it's another beautiful, beautiful day. We've done our mahi this morning. Uh, did a bit of monitoring for the ants, so setting out those puddles and uh, midday now everyone's come to this beautiful beach here 
Absolutely stunning. Uh, well, I'm gonna head out around the corner over here. Get in the water, Drew's already gone. I'm gonna catch him up on the way. And uh, I don't know what we're looking for today. Obviously kingfish, we're still trying to get that kingfish. But uh, I might spend a bit of time trying to get some craze today. So yeah, flew the drone here and what a beautiful bay. This place is just amazing. I've got so many amazing photos from the drone. It's just just blew my mind how beautiful this island was. But yeah, in the water, we headed out. We headed out to a point that had a little rock off it. And I made my way out there. Drew had made it there before me. But I made my way out there, made my way around the rock. And man, it just was not fishy. But uh, came to this area and finally found a few, few bait fish in that. But uh, started snooping around hoping to pick up a snapper chilling over one of these ledges or something like that but in this case I don't find anything Quiet, this is the fishiest spot there is. Yeah, there's a lot of over there. Oh, yeah. Have you blasted a few away? Okay. Have you shot a few? I've shot one, but yeah, I thought I'd save the rest until we go back. I've seen a few, maybe five pounds snapper. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen anything. It went round the outside, but it was real quiet around there. Yeah, While I've been on the snoop though, I have found a crayfish tucked up in a hole. And it was the plan to get a few crayfish today, so I make my way down. And he's tucked up right in this little crack here. So I work my way in, get a grab, and uh, thankfully it's good enough. Managed to drag him out. And I've got a nice cray to take home with me. <laughs> Absolutely no need to measure this crayfish. He was quite a reasonable size. Well, I didn't get it on camera, but I just caught this little cray. I think it'll be legal. I'll go and catch up with Drew and measure it. We measured this crayfish, it was easy legal. And uh, that was number two for me. And Drew had also shot a butterfish, so he gave that to me to nice put in the float boat as well, while I was going there. And when I caught that second crayfish, I noticed there was another one in the crack there. So, yeah, just went straight back there, dropped down, and made my way along the crack until I found the crayfish. And this was one of those cracks where they kind of can't get away from you. It's a short hole, so to speak. So, just a pretty casual grab there, secured it. And I just go along the go along the crack here a little bit further just in case there's a, any more craze that I can put Drew onto but uh, I don't find any more yeah I think that'll be legal too hopefully easy easy legal um, I might follow you onto this burley if I can. What's that? I might try and follow and film you on this burley. 
I've got my limiter craze now because it's three here, eh? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. So Drew had dumped a bunch of fish scraps from the feed we had the other night down here. And I followed him down to have a look. But this spot just really was not fishy. And uh, yeah, you can see the frames lying there. There was no fish on them or anything. It was just not the greatest day for fish life here. And so we made our way back into the beach. Three nice crayfish. Drew here's got a couple of butters and a nice snapper. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon it'll be good for dinner. Yeah. Be a pretty good feed, I reckon. We are, well, the guys are helping wash the gear up. We're going to get ready. We've got a bit of mahi to do for the afternoon. Bit of ant baiting and uh, yeah. All right. It is just about dinner time and we've cooked our crayfish from today up. They're looking pretty damn fine. We've got an extra one because we've got Drew's one from yesterday as well. And uh, we're having them for dinner along with a bunch of other stuff. And uh, yeah, should be pretty good. Alright, it's Sunday. It's the last day on the island. We've come to this beautiful bay here. And uh, yeah, last mission for the week. We're out here, we really want to get that kingfish. So, yeah. This was yet another beautiful bay with beautiful scenery. I just cannot emphasize how incredibly beautiful this place was. I was just blown away. So yeah, we made our way out and the first spot we made it to was a weed line. Uh, and I'm dropping down here it was all looking really, really nice, but there really just wasn't enough current here. You can see there's not a lot of fish, not a lot of bait fish or anything. There's a few, but there's not heaps and heaps. But yeah, the plan here was to get to the bottom, lie on the sand, pick it up a little bit, but uh, I make it almost all the way and I realize I'm at full stretch on my float line. My 15 meter float line, I'm at full stretch and I can't even hit the bottom yet. So clearly it was a little deeper than what I thought it was. But uh, that kind of stuffed the plan to lie on the bottom up. So he yeah, just decided I'd head back to the surface. I might head over that way. Oh, yeah. This is pretty fing not fishy. Quite a few craze just down here. Down here? Yeah. Have you got some or? Eh? I caught one, but it's too small. Oh yeah. Might pay, eh? So this is the second spot that we were diving. It was a rock out 
off the coast a little bit, deep water all around it. And uh, yeah, I was working on one side, Drew was working on the other, and then we came back together to have a chat, and Drew told me he'd found this lovely little group of crays here, so he's trying to get one out of a crack here, and I look down to the bottom of this crack and see a couple of reasonable, or what look like reasonable crayfish, so when he doesn't get one out of that crack. I go to the surface and suggest he has a go at these two. Did you already pull those two at the bottom? No, I haven't pulled those two. I reckon they'll both be legal. Yeah, I thought you could grab those if you wanted. Oh, I'll, I'll actually film you grabbing them if you want. Okay, give it a go. So we head back down and Drew just goes straight down the crack and gets straight into it. It's kind of probably a little bit late to the party on that one. But uh, he gets a good grab on one and uh, heads back to the surface with it. But I know there's another one in there so I go in for a look and I can see it in what must be a short hole and it's wedged itself in there but I can get my hand to it so I get a good grab on it and pull it out and hit the surface with that one as well. This, they're both right on the money. Yeah. No, they're legal. Yeah. I reckon they're legal. Yeah, I reckon. I move on further along and I find this crack here. And it's got a few crayfish in it actually. But uh, we've got this nice crayfish down the bottom here. So I work my way in, line it up, and get a quick grab. And I can see these two crayfish above it. So since that was a nice easy grab, I decide I'll have a go at one of them. And the bigger one's actually in behind this first one here. So I managed to reach in past it and grab it out as well. But yeah, I actually only ended up measuring one of them. The other one was just easy, easy legal. But uh, measured that one and it's easy legal as well. Easy. Nice. Nothing out there. Yeah. A few demo cells, but nothing. Yeah. And uh, into the float boat they go. How's our time looking? It's 7 past 2, so I reckon we've got about 30 minutes. Okay. We'll probably start heading back at 2. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quick walk through the bush and this is what we've come to. You little beauty. So yeah, since this was our last night on the island, we decided we'd go and have a picnic dinner at the beach. And we came to this beautiful beach here. 
Just another, just another beach, just another stunning, stunning beach on this island of stunning beaches and bays and just incredible. This was an amazing, amazing experience and I really, really hope I can come back again next year and do it all again. All right, well, that's pretty much all I've got for this video. We made our way back home now. But uh, yeah, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to, firstly, Drew and his girlfriend, Alan. They're the ones that were running the program on the island and organizing all of us volunteers. And I also want to thank all the volunteers, both the crew that we were with, awesome crew by the way, but also all the other volunteers that have come and gone and done this amazing work to try and eradicate these ants. I want to thank the owners of the island. This whole eradication program is funded by them and it's really important to protect the unique species that are on that pest free island. So yeah, thank you very much for funding that really important work. And of course, I have to thank you guys for watching this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.